Shh. Do you hear that? The soundtrack of nostalgia. Oh god, I'm getting formulaic now. For a game that came out 12 years ago to still have as big of a following as it does, Skyrim has to be one of the greatest games ever made. Just look up Skyrim on YouTube and half of the videos are just people either bashing it because it's popular or doing something to Todd Howard that I can't say because you nor I want that image in our heads. Skyrim is a good game. Controversial statement, I know, but it's true. I don't really have anything unique to say about it because the good has been talked about to death, but I'll still go over the basics if you're a weirdo and haven't played it yet, meaning that Todd Howard hasn't gotten to you. You're a lucky soul. Skyrim creates an atmosphere unlike any game I've ever played. It just whisks you away to a different world so effectively that it makes me wonder if the devs actually coded in a dimensional rift instead of a map. Immersion is a word that gets thrown around so much to the point where I think it's kind of corny, but Skyrim is really the only game that I would describe as truly immersive. The story, as rough as the voice acting is at certain points, is also very good. It isn't as in-depth as games like New Vegas, but it's still good and allows for a lot of interesting plot lines. Until you play them so much that you can recite the lines from memory. Rorikstead. I... I'm from Rorikstead. I honestly wish that a lot of these plot lines were delved into a lot more. The Bard's College in Solitude just exists, there's like two quests, and you can finish most of the other quest lines within like a couple of hours, so it really leaves me wanting a lot more. Games like Red Dead Redemption 2 take literal weeks to beat, and maybe that's a little excessive, but you can realistically 100% most of Skyrim's story in like a week and a half. And that's including all the side content. One complaint that I hear a lot about Skyrim, and for a lot of other Bethesda games, is that it's just not challenging enough, but I kinda love that about it. Bethesda wouldn't go through all of the trouble of making this game this atmospheric and immersive if it made you want to pull your hair out. There's a reason why 90% of Dark Souls looks like the ass end of an HP Lovecraft story. You're meant to suffer. Oh! By the tendrils of Shop Shop Summer Grass, you frightened me! Skyrim, despite all of its shortcomings, is designed to be a pretty relaxing game. It's why the storytelling isn't super in-depth, but the world-building is. Bethesda understands that we, as adults, have other things that we have to do, so it doesn't really require you to sink a ton of time into the game, but it rewards the players who do sink a lot of time into it, with the incredible world-building that Bethesda accomplished. Sure, it's accomplished by the player reading books, but... Shut up. Remember that scene in Whiplash where J.K. Simmons is verbally accosting Miles Teller to the point where he breaks down emotionally, eventually becoming so determined to prove J.K. Simmons wrong that he practices so much that it hurts him physically and mentally? That's what modding Skyrim is like. Most mods are super easy to download, plug and play, download this file, put it in this folder and into the game directory. Easy enough. Other times they give you no instructions and expect you to have a full blown bachelor's degree in computerology, yes that's a real word, if you want to understand why the game isn't working. Why is there a rabbit with six legs coming off the sun? Let me go through my own personal experience with modding Skyrim. I uninstalled all of my mods and the entire game to make space for the video clips for that one Marvel Legacy video that I did. And I knew the horrors of modding. I was well aware, so this time I wanted to do it right. So I decided to enter my own 12-step program. Step 1. Reinstall Skyrim. Step 2. Download a bunch of old mods that I have. Step 3. Realize that I wasn't happy with how the game looked, so I decide to restart. Step 4. Delete the mods that you want to replace and, en masse, install a bunch of new ones. Step 5. The game doesn't work. Step 6. Delete the game out of rage and give up. Step 7. See a video on YouTube the next day of literally the most beautiful Skyrim gameplay you've ever seen. Step 8. Try and fail to quell your raging desire to play Skyrim. Step 9. Reinstall the game the next day. Step 10. Delete every single mod and start from scratch. Step 11. Spend 14 hours, no, literally 14 hours trying to get Skyrim to work and try not to fall into an endless pit of realizations of your loneliness and lack of a life. Step 12. Profit.
Now, you don't have to do this for every single little mod that you download. Most of the time, you can just download it and be off on your way. But you have to go through this process every time you download mods in bulk, or else Todd Howard is going to throw a symbol at your head because you decided to change his masterpiece. But, I mean, oh, <laughs> is the end product worth it? Modding the Elder Scrolls V Skyed Rim is genuinely one of the most frustrating experiences that a human being can endure. But the end product is just so unbelievably worth it that it actually feels like you just won World War II. But why? Why? Why go through all of this modding? Why undergo all of this pain and suffering for a game this old? Well, if you've been counting, I've already spoken his name three times in this video, so he should be showing up any second now. Any second now. Any s Todd Howard, the director and executive producer of Bethesda. I don't think I've given more money to someone that I don't like. Except the IRS, maybe. I mean, the absolute coconuts on Bethesda to release games that are just absolutely broken on launch, knowing that the people are going to buy them instantly anyway, is just... Ugh, it's terrifying. <laughs> really? I genuinely think that Bethesda is the single most bipolar game company in existence. On one hand, a good two-thirds of their games are basically masterpieces and are some of the best ever made. But on the other hand, they are actually a candidate for the worst game developer. We are finally releasing our greatest games in VR, but don't worry, if you've already purchased the non-VR game, you get the joy of paying a full $60 for Skyrim for the third time. We love your wallet. Crappy business practices aside, the actual games that they make have laughable quality at times. The first Red Dead Redemption game was never ported to PC because the code was so broken that it was, quote, a miracle that the game ever worked at all. And it is still considered to be a masterpiece, with very few reported bugs other than, like, Donkey Lady or something. It's the only one I know. That, at least to me, shows a genuine desire to make good art and tell good stories. But Bethesda, they just released their game early just to fix it later because they'd rather have the money now. Except, they don't even fix it. One of the oldest reported bugs in Skyrim is that when you get hit by a giant who's bashing his club on the ground, you get launched into the stratosphere. And to this day, still happens. Still happens. It's kind of a meme that Bethesda has released Skyrim like six times on every single console known to man. It was actually memed on so much to the point that Bethesda themselves even made a video about it. But what was actually in these releases of Skyrim is just crazy. Like borderline swindling. First, you have Release Day Skyrim, then Legendary Edition, which comes with all the DLC and a statue, I think. And then they have the Remastered version, which took Skyrim from looking like a mid-tier game from 2011 to a top-notch game from 2011. All they did to remaster the game was redo the lighting and upscale the textures. Most of the bugs from the day one release of Skyrim were still there. It just looks slightly prettier. I know it probably had something to do with engine limitations, but I mean, damn it, Todd. Arkham Knight was out at this point, and this is what you call a remaster? Then after that, yeah, we're still not done. They came out with the Anniversary Edition, which included all of the paid mods that they game, which suck for a whole different reason that I'm not gonna get into right now. Four different re-releases of Skyrim, but then with Skyrim VR and the Switch Edition, it ups it to six. Halle freaking Luya, Skyrim is my favorite game. So because of Bethesda's admittedly lackluster attempts to remaster Skyrim, and strangely lackluster attempts to make me actually dislike Todd Howard, the modding community takes it upon themselves to fix Bethesda's mistakes. Seriously, why do I still like Todd Howard? I, he has like 10 charisma or something. You dork. Go back to the chess club. Who's laughing now? Yes, I was in the chess club. Some people go way more overboard than others, trying to make Skyrim look super photorealistic, but I don't really like that. I just kind of like the feel of regular Skyrim, so I wanted to go for a more Skyrim Plus look. And with a little bit of reanimation and a redone combat system, because why the hell not, that's most of my load order. Sure, I can also go to Cyrodiil or Shrek's house, but psh, psh, that's just for fun. That's... That's, that's just for fun. But the funniest thing to me is the exact mods that the community makes, especially the more popular ones. No, no, not, not, not the porn mods. How horny are you people? The most downloaded mod on Nexus for Skyrim Special Edition is the unofficial Skyrim Special Edition patch, or Usip 
Bethesda spent so little time actually fixing their, at that point, five-year-old game that the fans had to go through and fix their mistakes. Hell, the mod is like a hundred megabytes. That's huge! Fallout 4's patch mod is only six. Props to Arthmore for, like, putting in weeks of work, it seems like, just to do what a AAA game developer couldn't. Fix their friggin' game! Hey, hey, it's me. It's, it's, it's Future Dryan. Okay, so this section wasn't in the original script, so pardon my voice, it's a little weird. But after editing a lot of this video, I feel the need to include it. I wanted to make something perfectly clear. Mods are not perfect. I know I complained about the process of installing mods earlier, but even in the game, they just aren't really perfect. Sure, they improve upon an already good game, and some modding projects, like Beyond Skyrim, are literally making six other Skyrims within Skyrim. But most mods aren't like that. I spend more time modding Skyrim than actually playing Skyrim. I don't know why, and I don't know how this game isn't just something totally different now, but since I mod this game that much, a lot of my time is spent troubleshooting. Going to forums and figuring out problems with mods is most of my current Skyrim experience, and at the same time, most of these mods are not on the same level as a AAA game developer. So, while I genuinely do not like Bethesda as a business, I don't want to start claiming that this game is totally unplayable without mods, or is inherently worse because mods make it so much better. This game is very playable, totally vanilla. I actually really like the vibe of Vanilla Skyrim. It brings back a lot of nostalgia from my middle school days, back when I first got it. The reason why I have so many mods is because I've played this game for like seven years and I just want something that's more up to modern day standards. Bethesda really did do an incredible job with Skyrim, and the modding community is doing an equally incredible job most of the time. So it's really just down to how you want to play this game. You know, everything is preference. Okay, I love Skyrim. I really do. Modding it sucks, and Bethesda sucks, and Todd Howard... You know, he's God Howard at this point. I mean, he has to be. For a game to be such a broken mess yet so good makes Skyrim the White Album of gaming. The sessions for the White Album were horrible for the Beatles, and it still feels pretty disjointed, but it's my favorite Beatles album, so shut up. It's just sad that one of Skyrim's biggest legacies is that it's one of the best games ever made, made by one of the worst companies. I don't want Skyrim to be as challenging as modern games, look as good as modern games, or be voice acted as well as modern- Okay, maybe I do want it to be voice acted as well as modern games. Just look at Oblivion. I heard that thieves broke into the Arcane University, the Imperial Legion compound, and the temple all on the same night. Wait a minute, let me do that one again. I just want it to not be exactly like it was in 2011. Just as broken, looking just about as good, and being just as clunky. My lack of faith in Bethesda to deliver is the reason why I haven't played Starfield yet. I know what kind of company they are, and I'm going against you, Todd Howard. I'm only going to buy Starfield when it goes on sale. Okay, this video has been pretty serious, so let's talk about some of the craziness that my modding of Fallout 4 is. I am literally Batman, beating up stormtroopers while Doom music is playing in the background! PEAK GAMING! Hey, you. You're finally awake. You were trying to cross the border, right? Walked right into that Imperial ambush, same as us, and that thief over there. Damn you, Stormcloaks. Skyrim was fine until you came along. Empire was nice and lazy. If they hadn't been f looking for you, I could have stolen that horse and been halfway to Hammerfell. You there, you and me, we shouldn't be here. It's these Stormcloaks the Empire wants. We're all brothers and sisters and binds now, thief. Shut up back there. What's wrong with him, huh? Watch your tongue. You're speaking to Ulfric Stormcloak, the true High King. Ulfric? The Jarl of Windhelm? You are the leader of the rebellion. But if they've captured you, oh gods.